We all live in a digital world. We all need it to be open and safe. We all want to trust and to be trusted. We all despise control and desire freedom. We, we are all united. I am pleased to introduce the distinguished panelists. Professor Darius Mrozek, Assistant Professor in the Department of Applied Informatics at the Silesian University of Technology. Welcome. Good afternoon. Nice to, nice to see you. Madame Natasha Eckert, Global Head of University Relations at Siemens AG. Welcome. Thanks for having me. Madame Eva Mikos Romanovic, Business Development Manager at Siemens Poland. Hello, nice to see you, nice to meet you. Mr. Jakub Ciemienga, intern in Industrial Automation at Bosch Rexroth, student at the Warsaw University of Technology and at the Warsaw School of Economics. Welcome. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for having me. Mr. Karol Miondlicki, head of IT Lab, assistant at the West Pomeranian University of Technology in Szczecin. Hello, welcome everybody. Pupils from the Electronics and Computer Science Club, Knurów, Poland, in alphabetic order. Bartłomiej Dudek, welcome. Welcome, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Uh, Tomasz Kawalec, welcome. Uh, Patryk Kwaśniok, welcome. Bartłomiej Pacia, welcome. Hi, hello, everybody. Szymon Rafałowski, welcome. Hello. Mateusz Zmuda, welcome. Hello. I would also like to send my warmest greetings to Mr. Donald Dubiel, uh, who couldn't be with us, but who is the mentor of the Computer Science Club. My name is Aleksandra Musielek, and I will moderate today's discussion. First, to get a better understanding of, this, uh, of the topic discussed today, I will start from running a short video showing the latest invention created by our guests from Rybnik and Szczecin. Let's see how the mini satellite CANSAT Agok Nurov 1 works. The invention, which was awarded the first place in the Polish finals of the European Space Agency competition CANSAT 2020. If you could give me a moment, please. Hello, we are Agot, also from CNE. We designed and built a functional mini satellite for the CANSAT 2019 contest and would be happy to share with you the details of our work. The CANSAT contest is a competition held by ESA on European scale and SRO Poland from Copernicus Science Center on the national stage. The main objective of the contest is to create a concise mini satellite designed to be carried 3,000 meters up into the air and descend using a parachute while performing a specific mission. Our satellite consists of numerous subsystems, thanks to which it is capable of taking many measurements and controlling its position. We use the GPS module and magnetometer to estimate the position of our satellite in 3D space. That data can be later used by different algorithms. Main distinguishing feature of our satellite is its capability of flying to any chosen target in its range. It would not be possible with only sensors and algorithms, and besides them, we have to use some kind of control surfaces. Because of it, we decided to use a special type of parachute called the wing type parachute. Thanks to its design, we gained the ability of controlling our CANSAT's flight's direction and speed. Thanks to special construction of our satellite and very flexible design, we can find many possible uses of our project. One of the main ones would be delivering packages to hardly accessible places during humanitarian help missions. We spend a lot of time on this product, both in the workshop, in our homes, and in the field. It required many field tests. Initially, we used a big rock type kite and later drones to carry out our satellite to the desired altitude. In both cases, we used a launcher that would allow us to remotely free our CANSAT. In order for the CANSAT to fly to its destination, it needed an autopilot algorithm that would control its parachute to safely guide it to the target. 
For such an algorithm to work perfectly, a large number of tests would be needed, way more than we were able to do in the field. Because of that, we designed a virtual testing environment capable of simulating various variables, such as wind conditions, satellite forward and descent speed, and GPS inaccuracy. It enabled us to create highly complex parts of the steering algorithm, such as over-target flight patterns. We won the contest achieving first place ex equal on the national stage. Sadly, the European stage of the competition didn't happen because of the pandemic. Despite this, we are happy with the outcome of the contest because of all the experience we were able to gather. Throughout this time, we learned programming on many platforms, basic aerodynamics, electronic prototyping, sponsor correspondence, project planning, and highly intensive group work. Uh, Mateusz, if you could tell us a bit uh, uh, about how you came up with the idea of creating the satellite and did any private company provide inspiration and support to make this project a reality? Uh, so uh, we came up with the idea of a gliding satellite quite spontaneously. Uh, we kind of got together and brainstormed uh, all the ideas we had and uh, it turned out to be, be the best one at the time. Uh, so we didn't really exactly get any inspiration from any specific company, uh, but uh, there were many businesses and uh, natural persons that uh, helped us uh, to achieve our goal. For example, we had uh, Ayut, our main sponsor, uh, and we also had a crowdfunding campaign uh, which collected over $2,000. Uh, thank you. And uh, how time-consuming it was to take part in such a project? Okay, so by uh, default, uh, we uh, work uh, three hours per week uh, in our work uh, station. And uh, if we uh, have uh, work to do, uh, we uh, could spend up to... Um, around 30 hours per week and uh, except that we uh, spent many hours in the field uh, in uh, field tests and uh, we work a lot of uh, in home thank you and i presume that participating in this competition didn't consist of just building the satellite as you mentioned uh, were there other activities you had to complete uh, the whole idea behind the concert competition is to create a contest that uh, is to create a contest with processes similar to real space projects, like this realized by NASA or ESA. That meant that all the teams had to compile a set of lengthy reports fully written in English, describing all their progress. There also meant we had that also means we had to find the funding for our projects. And that was the motivation behind our crowdfunding campaign and looking for sponsors. Thank you very much. And now we move on to the second video explaining how CMOF works. Pracowaliśmy semi-autonomiczny robot do dezynfekcji, który był opracowywany w ramach walki z COVID-19. Wynalazek można zastosować m.in. w szpitalach, w szkołach, w urzędach, na uczelniach wyższych i ma przede wszystkim odciążyć ludzi od uciążliwej czynności dezynfekcji. Czynność ta nie wymaga udziału ludzi, a dzięki zastosowaniu robota będziemy mogli zmniejszyć emisję wirusa poprzez zmniejszenie ryzyka zakażenia i rozprzestrzeniania się wirusa w społeczeństwie. Uh, Mr. Miondlicki, to what extent uh, collaboration with uh, the university helped you to create your invention? What about your experience in cooperation with companies? 
Uh, hello, I'm Karolin Litsky. We cooperate with Siemens for many years. So we, when we get this grant from the European Union funds, we check their offer and we select the components. They also uh, offer their help. They come to us, they program, uh, expand what we can do with this and uh, show all possibilities for this Zimove platform. We also cooperate with Siemens in didactic. We have uh, test stands with PLC and the students teach and learn how to program PLC. We also cooperate with CNC because we are in mechanical department. So we have many CNC machines. So we also cooperate in C numeric and CNC solutions. Thank you very much. And now let us watch how the problem of the dog named Dexter was solved. Smart collar, a gadget that keeps your dog safer than ever during her walks. It's a little GPS device that will let you find your pet in case it escapes either seeking for adventures or in fear of some danger. When it happens, all you have to do is just click a button in the Smart Color mobile app and after a while, it will navigate you straight to where your paw is. Simple, isn't it? It works for over 20 hours after a single charge. You can use it to find your bike or a scooter too. Smart Color consists of a GPS module a telephone module with a SIM card for communication with a mobile app, a custom printed circuit board with a programmed microcontroller that is in control of the whole device, all powered by a battery and placed in a 3D printed waterproof enclosure with smooth edges and a bright pulsating LED to help you find your dog in the dark. The color can be turned off only through the app, so don't worry if your dog tries to do it manually. That's all for the prototype. Wait for an upgraded compact, fast, and easy to use version of Smart Color, also for cats. Bartek, do you think that participation in the contest for young talents in electronics will help you in your future career? I think that knowledge and experience I acquired through participating in this contest will for sure help me in both in my university life and in my professional life, just as it helps me in uh, my current life as a student and a hobbyist. Participating in this competition, I had an opportunity to work on my technical skills, uh, such as circuit design and programming, as well as some other skills like teamwork, uh, writing skills and presentation skills. Because uh, not only the design uh, has to be as it best, uh, but the project has to be uh, well described by an oral presentation and a written, desc written description. Mm, what was quite new for me, because usually I would just build a project in my room, uh, say, well done, and let it be. Um, also, all the, pro all the problems we encountered while building this project, and there are many of them, mm, made us gain some knowledge that it's not supposed to be learned by reading books or studying theory, but it has to be learned by practice, uh, by working on something tangible. Mm, and to make this project different from my previous ones, mm, we had some deadline, uh, which, trust me, changes a lot. Apart from this, I've met a number of uh, other young enthusiasts uh, of electronics to exchange my, uh, exchange my experience with, and it is needless to say how significant the role of networking is nowadays. Finally, the competition made some, uh, someone other than Dexter the dog appreciate the smart color, and this is what I think is uh, good for young people who can be creative in a number of possible ways. Just some goal and some feedback to help them carry on. Thank you. Thank you. And 
Last but not least, let's see the fourth invention, a unique user-friendly tourist application designed for people who want to visit a lovely place in Poland, Ruda, from Google Code in 2019 winner. Discover Rude is a tourist application for people visiting Rude, a small village in Silesia region with rich history. It is available on Android and iOS. Currently, there are over 70 places in the app, each with location and description. There is also a map with bicycle routes and a history section. The app is useful not only for tourists, but also for people who live in Rude. They can, for example, easily see data on the current state of air pollution or interesting events taking place in the area. Users can like, visit, and comment to places. Thanks to the cooperation of the local government authorities, a program of rewards is being created for people who have discovered the most places in order to encourage them to learn more about the area they visit or live in. Mm -hmm. uh, Bartek, how do you see your future path in the IT field? Mm, well, to be, <clears throat> I'm sorry, to be honest, I don't know. Um, I like to think that the future for me is now. I'm just after high school, but I already work as a software developer and I'm also studying computer science at the Silesian Uni University of Technology. And working as a programmer was my goal ever since I had learned programming and came to like it. And IT is an immense field. It's uh, really big and it's growing really fast. And this growth is only accelerating, so I can't I can't really say where, where I will be in a few years, but I'm happy uh, of my current situation of where I am currently. And uh, how did you uh, come up with the idea of creating the app? Um, oh, this is, this is a cool question and it's accompanied by a cool story that I always like to tell when somebody asks me this question. And the year was 2016 and I was walking in a park in my village, Rudy, which was mentioned on the video. And I remember uh, seeing a old, an old shabby tourist table with a map of the park and it was really, it was not encouraging you to learn more about the area you came to visit. So I thought that it would be great if somebody created uh, something, some more, a, a more modern solution to the problem. For example, some more mobile application. And after a while I thought that, well, why shouldn't I do it myself? And I had really completely no programming experience at the time, but we've, but I learned how to code from the internet and I created the app by myself. I gathered all the information about uh, many other places in Rudy. And after a year, I released the first, the, the first version of uh, the application to, to the Google Play Store. I also wrote to a few local newspapers about the new application. And thanks to that, I got a few, I got the first users and uh, first few positive reviews on the App Store and th this was a really great, really empowering feeling to see that people use your use what you have created and that they enjoy using it and they are even learning about your, about the place you live in, ab about the place you love and other people, thanks to your, your work, are learning about this place. It's a really, really great feeling. And uh, initially you focused on uh, uh, Rude uh, area, but what's next? Yeah, uh, my initial aim was just to create a simple app for people visiting Rude. But after, after some time, I realized that this approach can be expanded uh, to support multiple re regions, not only Rude, one village. Uh, so for the past year, I was developing uh, the application, the, simple, the in initially simple app into a fully featured project for managing to tourist information of multiple regions. And it's still pretty much work in progress, but I'm slowly at my own pace developing the the software, and also at the same time I gathering data required to fill these regions. With you, you, you know, I have to gather information about places, their history, their 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 locations. Uh, I have to buy bike routes and history articles and stuff like that. So that's what I'm focusing uh, on now. Mm -hmm. So you gathered big amount of data. Uh, what's your key to finding information about your area? Uh, well, there is no simple key. Uh, first, the 
the simplest thing that I always do is just Google. When I, when I want to add some place to the application, uh, I just Google it. And when I, and this works, to be honest, for the 90% of cases. But when I don't find um, the, the information on Google, I uh, ask my dad, who is a forester, and so he knows the area pretty well. And he almost <laughs> always tell me, I'm sorry. Can I ask uh, persons um, joining the debate uh, to mute while Bartek is speaking? Okay, uh, so I will continue. So I always ma ask my dad uh, about some particular place and he often gives me enough information to fill all the gaps in my knowledge that I have and to add the place to the database and share it to users through the application. But when I don't, but when I don't, when even my dad doesn't know, doesn't have enough knowledge, uh, I, I, go, I go read books about history of my, uh, of my uh, village, which I came to have a lot through all, all, all these years of uh, gathering information uh, for, the, for the application. And I have also met a few really, really great, interesting people, because I just, there were a few, a few situations like, I knew that some particular pe person uh, had information about some place, uh, th and these people are often elderly, per uh, elderly people. So I just wrote an email to that person, and then we met, and we have talked for hours about history of our, of uh, the of, of Rudy, and and history of my re region in general. And I really am fond of this uh, of these meetings. So that's that's my process for gathering data. But I it's not really scalable, and I will have to find a better way to if I want to support m more re regions than just to Rudy. Thank you, we keep our fingers crossed for you, Bartek. Uh, thank you all for those very inspiring um, stories. It was an inspiring part of, of, of this um, uh, meeting and I'm looking forward to the second part. And uh, such talented students deserve uh, the best learning environment possible. It can be achieved through support delivered by good universities and access to best practices offered by reliable, uh, reliable business entities. So now let us listen to how the collaboration framework between students, academia and business works and should work. Uh, let me start from Professor Mrozek. How do you assess the current level of cooperation between universities and business? Should such cooperation be deepened? Well, uh, I would say that the current level of the cooperation between uh, universities and business is quite good. Uh, and it, it's for sure much better than it used to be 20 years ago in, in our country uh, at the moment. So I remember the times when I couldn't find a, a, a job being a student or a part-time job. Now it's completely different. Uh, so I would say that the cooperation is, is implemented right now at, at multiple levels or multiple uh, uh, planes, let's say. So for example, companies, uh, they want to um, accompany students, be in, in, in their heart from the early stage of, of their careers. And they, they, they promote uh, themselves uh, in the university buildings. They, they announce some internships. Uh, for example, to, to um, um, give the students better experience uh, and, and, and uh, much more skills when they finish the study. They, pro they also provide some lectures and, and present uh, modern technologies for students, for example, to, to show them what is important, particularly in, in this moment at the market, and to motivate them more uh, to, to, uh, to acquire these skills. Uh, sometimes they, they can even uh, take part in uh, some regular lectures as guest lectures, and that's also very interesting uh, for, for, as, uh, for, for students and for teachers as well. Um, and apart from the students and the education, some companies, they also implement common research and development projects, which is, which is also important. Uh, and it also tightens up the, the researchers and, and the companies uh, and gives some benefits for both the university and business. And um, 
within this corporation, uh, uh, usually the, the university delivers something, delivers some problems that should be solved. And the academic part is responsible for the technical technological innovation, which is, uh, for example, important for the company because the company have to compete at the market, right? So that's that's the important part. Uh, if it should be different, I would say that uh, well, uh, there is always a place to deepen the, the cooperation between the university, but between the academia and the industry. And from for the educational perspective, I always encourage uh, the companies to be present at the university and and to be visible for the students. For for example, as a as a as a deputy dean for for the cooperation and the development at my faculty, which is the faculty of the automatic control, electronics, and computer science, right? The the the, the, the fields that are very popular at, at in our in our country at the moment in Poland. Uh, I, I try to mediate the cooperation between the high-tech companies and, and our faculty, uh, and sometimes uh, the whole university. So I, I show the companies uh, the, the current, how the current cooperation uh, may look like, uh, what are the levels or models of, of the cooperation to, to make it working properly or to make it efficient. Uh, uh, and what are the investments? Uh, uh, what what the investments are are worth doing to strengthen the the, the cooperation between the, the within the particular fields? Because the companies uh, can be interested in in different fields. They can be interested in different levels of the cooperation. Of course, still I wish that the that the cooperation uh, can be deepened and that some ideas that that uh, appear at the university that are some some that are invited here uh, can be transferred to the to, in, to the industry much quicker. Uh, so as a university, we try to make some step to simplify the cooperation by organizing some meetings for the companies. Uh, uh, by having the, the specially um, founded center for the innovation and technology transfer that, that works at our university to simplify the, the deployment of the ideas, to simplify the commercialization of the ideas, and to help researchers to find their partners in business. Thank you very much. Um, uh, I, I would love to ask you more questions, but time is uh, running and uh, I will um, uh, now uh, move to uh, Madame Mikos Romanovic. Um, um, business helps to translate science into innovative product solutions for the benefit uh, of people and society. What do you think about the role played by business leaders in shaping students, future leaders of digital market? So oh, thank you very much for this question. Uh, I hope you can uh, hear me. And uh, what is the role? Uh, the base for this definition, how is the role? How is our wish to become a specific place in the daily life of the student? That's the um, precondition is the relation with the universities, with the teachers and with the students. It is not the, about that uh, I'm because I'm responsible for the cooperation with universities that I'm create this strategy and say, okay, that, that is we have to go this way. I am talking um, very often with a representative of the universities and then I set the right strategy. And the right strategy, the right attitude is to become for, uh, for first, to become a mentor. We would like to stimulate the creativity of the students um, we offer to them the um, advanced uh, engineering tools. We share with them our knowledge. And then we uh, try to support them to develop new ideas, to develop new solutions, to develop new projects and products. But we avoid uh, the situation that we reduce our uh, role to become simply a teacher. It is not the case. We would like to, um, to become a mentor, to a partner, and to give them some tools. So uh, we offer, of course, so different workshops and webinars. We um, uh, try to um, to be a part of the uh, of the uh, study. And for this reason, uh, we will welcome the idea, the uh, proposal, 
uh, made by the Silesian uh, Technology University. Uh, they offered to us to appoint the ambassador for Siemens. It, it, it will be a person, it will be a student who will support us to become visible and to uh, to create, to set a link to other students. So I think that's the right uh, approach and that's the strategy we would like to follow. Thank you very much. Uh, and Madame Eckert now, um, based on your experience today, who benefits from whom in the context of the industry academia students cooperation? If the answer is going to be that business is the beneficiary, then I will ask about some practical example from Siemens experience. Yeah, no, thanks. Thanks very much for the for the question. So I would say the best case is always if all the involved stakeholders benefit from the relationship. So might it be the students, might it be academic startups, might it be the professors, um, but also for sure industry, because I think everybody who knows, and I think Professor Mrozek, you, you, you have mentioned it. Uh, so industry, we have to make money at the end of the day. So um, academia often can be our playground, but in most of the cases when our uh, colleagues or also the researchers within Siemens assign some research projects uh, together with the university, they certainly want to, to get some, see some output uh, at the end or at least the intellectual property uh, that they can then use or, or license in, in their product portfolio. Um, but I would say, and, and Siemens has run a strategic partner program with selected international partners. So, so we drive an innovation ecosystem approach. And from the beginning on, we, I think we have always seen uh, university industry collaboration as a kind of really strategic, trustful partnership. So we have never had this kind of, the academia is the kind of supplier um, providing knowledge or providing research results that they can then um, put into product or into business. We, we really try to, to, uh, to shape together some research and to really tackle the, the big challenges in the world, because I think we are all aware of that the challenges we are facing at the moment uh, can't be uh, just worked on by one single stakeholder, though industry is not able to solve climate change, but academia not either. So we have more and more to collaborate and to network to, to really come up with uh, with good results. And what I really liked, um, Professor Morosik, you mentioned uh, the thing, industry certainly can uh, become more visible um, on campus. And I think this is something that we try also with our ecosystem approach so that we really shape co-location or you call it co-creation. So where we invite students, where we invite professors, but where we also invite our industry customers um, to, to, for example, work together in a smart factory where we have hardware on site, software on site, where the students can really just work on, on uh, real use cases. So where they see also the benefit they provide from a research site. Um, so for example, at Georgia Tech in the US, we, we um, uh, initiated or we, we opened up uh, a center for digital twin for buildings. So well, really a research group together with people from Siemens, um, they try to develop and to design more smarter, more sustainable buildings. And the data, they really get then the real data from the buildings on campus. And they also learn how to whatever they learn using artificial intelligence, machine learning algorithms to improve the, the whole, the overall handling of, of data. Um, so I think those things is something what, what we drive and, and we also, I think, um, Simov was an excellent example um, where you could see that, that Siemens also provide hardware and software, for example, for academic startups so that they can really work already with professional tools where they also get some training, some mentorships from Siemens guys. So all those are, I would say, maybe examples where you see, okay, 
Um, the students can learn on real use cases. Also for the professors, it's highly interesting to have the real data to work on where they really can get access, but also put on, or let's say attract students to, to work on those um, more applied research um, topics, but also the, the, the industry profits or benefits at the end of the day by getting results that then can transfer it into practice. But we also get access to the top talents. And I think, and, and this is what I really like with all those uh, startup pitches, you get so much creativity out of this. And, and having people within Siemens already have worked more than 20 years or even 30 years for Siemens, you can imagine that it's, it's always great to have the greater, the fresh ideas and you get the, the, the ideas from the younger generation who maybe have a completely different perspective, for example, on mobility. Uh, thank you very much, Natasha. And now let's hear a student's perspective. Uh, Mr. Ciminga, uh, you are a student working on your engineer's thesis and an employee in a leading engineering company. If you could please tell us how you established your cooperation with the current employer. Yes, of course. Um, good afternoon again, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so my relationship with Bosch Rextrop uh, first started over a year ago. Um, back then I was doing my second year at my university and I was um, just looking for an internship in the, uh, in the industry. Um, and um, I, I found my current employer on one of the um, like job platforms. So one could say it was uh, blind luck that, that our relationship started. And uh, whose initiative it was to start this cooperation? Mm, over a year ago, I had to um, withhold my internship because I participated in the Erasmus program in Vienna. Um, but uh, even while I was still abroad, I kept thinking about um, my engineer's thesis um, and uh, about my internship and my time at, at Bush Rexroth. Um, especially since I knew that um, it was and still is very common uh, and encouraged at the company um, for students uh, during their internships to create and work on their um, engineers or master's uh, theses. Um, so it was uh, my initiative to contact the employer um, and to suggest that we uh, extend our cooperation and that I work on my thesis there. Um, but I would say that it was also highly encouraged from their side. And then we also discussed all of the details together, like the scope and the time frame of the project. Mm -hmm. And given your academic background, how the reality of working in business match up with your preconceived notions and expectations? Um, thank you very much for this question, because I think um, it's, uh, it's a question that, that uh, all students and uh, future students uh, probably ask themselves, like, is the stuff we learn at the uh, we learn at the university really useful in the industry? Um, so I would say that uh, some of the technologies that are uh, taught at the university are also used in the industry, but some of the, them are maybe a little obsolete, um, and uh, that's why I think it's also very important for students um, to get a chance to actually experience working uh, in, like out there in the real world. Um, and uh, that was a very enthralling experience for me to uh, actually see the process of uh, creating real industrial applications uh, during my internship. Uh, but uh, what I also find very um, important and kind of surprising is how um, complex and how uh, to put it simply, hard it is to create real-world applica applications um, just because at a university, um, students usually get a pretty simple problem to solve. Like uh, we, for example, get, get a task to program a controller, to write a program, um, or uh, do, uh, do some experiments. Uh, but then, like in the real world, um, there are so many different departments uh, and people that, that need to be involved, like uh, for ordering parts, searching through documentation, um, and all the uh, things that need to be done uh, like that. 
So generally speaking, um, I would say it's uh, harder than I expected to uh, create a real life uh, industrial application. Um, but then it is well worth the effort since, um, well, from my perspective, it's just possible to create something uh, real. Thank you, Jakub. And now let's get back to Professor Mrozek. How do you see a perfect business academia framework of cooperation? Well, I would say that uh, within the in industry um, um, the 4.0 revolution that, that happens right now, uh, universities provide, um, and I believe they provide the, the intellectual potential, which is attractive uh, for, for the industry and business. And from my point of view, the, 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 the potential will be better if we can cooperate together. And um, somehow, it, it, some, sometimes it can be di difficult, but we, we have to accept some different ways of working and adjust to each other for sure. Uh, so uh, uh, going to concrete, I, I, I could say that, uh, as I mentioned, companies should be visible at the university. They could have some invited lectures for students and show uh, what business requires uh, uh, from students, right? Like Jakub said, it is uh, something important because uh, some technologies that are provided at the university are, qu are quite modern. Some of them may be obsolete, but still uh, the, the industry will show what skills are required and what knowledge is very important for students to know. So the students, they can profile their future education, for example, by cho choosing some elective courses that should be, for example, um, uh, uh, quite profitable for their future careers, right? And for, 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 for the things that they, they plan to do in the future. Uh, so companies could also influence the teaching programs somehow, but, I, but by advising uh, some changes uh, or some evolutions. And for example, uh, several companies uh, have uh, their representatives in our faculty, faculty council at the moment. And sometimes we have very interesting talks during an, our monthly meetings to, um, about different things, how to arrange particular things. How to arrange, for example, the teams within some projects that the students implement, what skills they should have, right? How, how, this should, how these things should work in order they, they can communicate, communicate in appropriate ways. The companies should, could provide also some internships, as, as we could uh, hear, uh, some topics for the bachelor's degrees, uh, some, some topics for the master degrees. Um, they could provide some mentoring, some grants or even awards, or I, I know some of them can even provide some scholarships for the best students, right? So, so the, the, the highest level that, that we imagine, and we have some this kind of, also this kind of examples, is that the, the, uh, the companies have also some sponsor laboratories at the, at, at, at the university which, uh, which, which this is, is the higher level, the highest level of the influence in the teaching because students can learn particular technologies within this lab. This is not, on, not only the problem that, or, or the, the thing that the company places the brand, the logotype of the company on the wall, right? It provides the technology, it provides the equipment and the students can learn with it and the students can learn the, the real problems and the students can even solve the problems that are defined by the company uh, by providing some innovative solutions, right? Like Natasha said, uh, they have open minds, they, they have different attitudes, they have young minds, right? Young brains that will bring some new, some, some modern approaches to, to, to solve the problems. And that, that, that would be great. Of course, in terms of the research and the cooperation with the researchers, uh, well, it could be great if, if the companies can, can also let the universities to, pro, to prepare some innovative uh, solutions for, for the industry as well. So, for example, some companies can treat the university as a kind of outsourced research, research lab, right? Because mm -hmm. even some of them, they don't have the research lab in, in their companies. They are too small for, for, having, for having these kind of labs. They can have these labs, for example, for, for, for as a outsourcing, right? 
And this is what we are trying to implement um, uh, with some funds by, by the, by the uh, national institutions as well, that the company can, that the company comes and it requires or needs some research to be done and it hires the researchers to, 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 uh, provide the innovation, for example, mm -hmm. in the uh, artificial intelligence that we know for many years, right? Mm -hmm. And now we have the skills and the knowledge which can be implemented and deployed in the industry. Yeah, and that, that, that's Thank a you. great mm -hmm. framework. Wonderful. Um, and Madam Mikos Romanovic, is there a tried and tested method on how to reach out to the best students and make sure that they will get attracted by the business leaders? So thank you uh, very much for this question. But before I start to answer the question, I would like to thank to um, Professor Mrozek because all the perspective and um, expectations uh, shared with us, that's the inspiration for us. Uh, so that's, that's the, um, that's the uh, inspiration and support to choose the right methods and to uh, choose the working methods. Because, um, because it is not possible to answer the question if we don't ask the person who we would like to address our offer. Therefore, we start uh, very early. So before the students become students, we try to, to catch the pupils. So for instance, this uh, competition uh, called electronics, how to make the life easier. It's our um, common projects uh, conducted together with the uh, Silesian University. This competition is addressed for whole Poland, not only for the pupils from uh, Silesia region. And we observed how um, attractive is it because we attract many pupils from all regions from Poland. And I personally observed the level of the results of the uh, of the uh, pr product solutions presented uh, um, during this competition is become better and better. Therefore, um, therefore, I, I think that's the right method. It's one of them. Then we try to be uh, visible and, uh, among the students and to try to offer to them such um, innovative formulas like mentoring programs or cycle of workshops. So for, uh, especially for the um, female students, this program called Ingenierki, and we try to show how attractive could be this uh, career in the um, uh, industrial uh, ecosystem. Uh, we also um, are offering the uh, PLC, mass, uh, Programming Master Program, and uh, we try to show what is really the matter Siemens is dealing with. What is behind this uh, definition, industrial uh, fourth revolution? What is behind uh, industry 4.0? We try to make this attractive in a very attractive way. And of course, such um, interaction is also a support for us to choose the right tools because the uh, world is changing. And sometimes it is not the point only of content, but also of the communication channels. So, that's a uh, very challenging uh, task, but we try to talk to each other, to hear to each other, and to adjust our way of uh, acting. Uh, thank you. We only have 10 minutes. So I move on quickly to Madame Eckert. Uh, what are the motivation and expectations of talented students entering the market? Um, I, I would say expectations have changed a bit. So getting back to my own study time, I think I spent a couple of, oh, let's say, months working for companies really standing in front of a copy machine. Um, I, I got good money. Um, the job was a bit boring, was not very creative, um, but I think a lot of us, we, we, we did it and a lot of companies offer those kind of jobs to students. This is, has changed completely and I'm, I'm really, frankly speaking, I'm very happy um, that the students are expect, expecting really more challenging um, engagement in industry and um, Jacob, you, you mentioned I like this. I want to, to study and learn something useful. 
also for industry. So something that, that uh, can be used then afterwards. On the other hand, I think what industry also wants from the students is um, uh, they are strong in, in, let's say, solving complex challenges. You, you have a strong theoretical background. Um, you can challenge industry. You can challenge also existing successful business. Um, because companies are sometimes really a bit slow in, in, in uh, let's say, evolving. Um, so I think this is something where I appreciate also this kind of distance you have, you learn in a study. And, and what I really can only, yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, let's, let's tell the students. So if, if you, for example, study engineering, and, and please do not only focus on engineering, because what industry really needs, we need such a broad skill set. So try also to focus, let's say, learn a bit of coding, um, just learn languages, learn intercultural skills, um, just also whatever, focus a bit on or, or try to, to also engage with more ethical questions, because if it comes, for example, to challenges like autonomous driving, it's, 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 not, a, it, it's not a technical issue, it's a legal issue, it's an ethical issue. So this is really where I would say, please try to keep, keep your, also your pathway as open um, as you can try out to get engaged, maybe with a startup, with an NGO, with a company. And we, from a Siemens side, we offer lots of programs. So we have trainee programs. Um, we also, we have internships. We have industrial PhD program where the students are employed on the Siemens side and work on a real challenge and are supervised um, um, from a professor, but we also, and Eva, you already have mentioned it, um, we have other formats, mentorships, but also shadowing, for example. We, in the meantime, invite students from our strategic partner universities doing some shadowing um, with a top manager or a researcher where you really get a flavor and an idea how, how it is to be whatever a, a, manage, a top manager in a, in, a, in a company. So just use as, as most you can get and really also to try to get this international outreach because you can imagine that um, in, in the past time we have checked CVs. In the meantime, even this culture is changing. So we are not as, as focused on CVs. We really want to meet the, the, the students. Uh, we, we need proactive students who really also want to work for an industry and who are curious. You are the beginning, you are so fresh, you even can criticize us in industry telling us why, why have you done this in this way so far so I think this kind of openness but also proactivity is something I, I really love to see and then also can tell you just do it so Uh, thank you very much, uh, Natasha. And uh, before we finish our very interesting discussion, uh, let us watch a video on the factory of the future in Rexroth. Cześć, znacie nas. To dla Was tworzymy produkty spełniające najwyższe normy jakościowe. Produkty spełniające Wasze oczekiwania. Wiemy też, jak ważne jest sprawdzenie konkretnego produktu przed wdrożeniem go na produkcję. Dlatego stworzyliśmy miejsce, gdzie każdy z Was może sprawdzić rozwiązania obecnie stosowane na całym świecie. Ale co ważniejsze, rozwiązania, które staną się standardami w przyszłości. To miejsce to nasz showroom. Jesteśmy otwarci na ludzi, na nowe technologie. Dlatego do naszego showroomu zapraszamy klientów, partnerów biznesowych, szkoły i uczelni. Zapraszam do środka. Cześć! Pokażemy Wam, jak połączyć świat IT z przemysłem. Dowiecie się, co to jest chmura i jak można z niej skorzystać. Pokażemy Wam, jak odebrać dane z maszyn, wysłać je do systemów analityki i baz danych. A to jest nasza linia produkcyjna, która w ponad 90% składa się z naszych produktów i oprogramowania. Między innymi sterowników PLC, komputerów przemysłowych, serwonapędów, falowników, silników, technologii przemieszczeń oraz techniki montażowej. W 
naszych podzespołów możecie zbudować maszyny dostosowane do specyficznych wymagań w swoich fabrykach. A żeby pokazać Wam, jak to można zrobić, zbudowaliśmy kompletną linię produkcyjną. Zobaczycie u nas typowe rozwiązania automatyki, tak jak robot kartezjański, robot typu Delta czy Kobot, ale też te nietypowe, tak jak ten manipulator planarny. Oferujemy również narzędzia pozwalające w prosty sposób zaimplementować sterowanie robotami, a na naszych szkoleniach będziecie mogli przejść przez każdy etap wdrożenia na rzeczywistym przykładzie. Oczywiście przed pracą na linii warto zapoznać się z naszym sprzętem. W tej sali prowadzimy szkolenia, w czasie których można zdobyć potrzebną wiedzę. Teraz trwa jedno z nich. Nie przeszkadzamy, idziemy dalej. Odpowiemy na pytanie, czy sztuczna inteligencja może przynieść konkretne korzyści w zakładzie. Rzeczywistość wirtualna i metadane, czy takim językiem możemy rozmawiać z linią produkcyjną. Wszystkie inne technologie, które widzicie Państwo w naszym showroomie, wózki samojezdne, roboty współpracujące, stworzyliśmy razem z naszymi partnerami. Są one na wyciągnięcie ręki i można je swobodnie testować. Jeśli macie jakiś pomysł na ulepszenie swojej produkcji lub chcecie poznać jakąś konkretną technologię, zapraszamy do nas. Nasi specjaliści czekają. Miałem wrażenia, podobały się. Dajemy sobie sprawę, że żadne szkolenie może trwać bez końca. Potrzebna jest chwila regeneracji. Cieszymy się, że mogliście oglądać ten showroom. Dla mnie to jest karwa, bo to jest prawdziwa linia produkcyjna w takim budynku. Zapraszamy. Uh, Mr. Cheminga, how does your engineer's thesis relate to the production line we just saw? Um, so my engineer's thesis is directly related to uh, the production line that uh, we just saw in the video. Um, my task is to create a new station that will be a Cartesian robot to uh, perform like a new task on the production line uh, using uh, the new product uh, products from Bosch Rexroth, uh, Uh, control X automation platform uh, and also some uh, solutions connected to the industry 4.0 like the uh, MQTT protocol, uh, Node-RED or remote access. Uh, is there a chance that this new product, new solution will be developed thanks to your cooperation with Box, Bosch Rexroth? Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for this question. Um, maybe not exactly a new product because these are actually uh, developed in a, at our headquarters, um, but I would say uh, a new innovative application because an innovation can be a completely new technology or device, um, but it can also be a new uh, employment and connection of already existing technologies. Uh, and I think in light of the latter definition, Um, I would say we are definitely creating an innovative solution since we are using uh, technologies like the new automation platform from Bosch Rexroth, uh, Control X automation, uh, the MQTT protocol, and uh, the other tools that are mentioned. Uh, and I cannot attest with certainty that these solutions haven't been used together yet, uh, but it's definitely something not widely spoken about. And you can believe me here, I tried to Google it multiple times. Um, so hopefully my cooperation with uh, Bosch Rexroth will enable us to offer these kind of solutions to the customers in the near future. Thank you very much. Thank you all for, for the fruitful debate today and thank all of you who watched us today. I take pride that the panel presented the innovative technological solutions developed by young Polish students and pupils. I hope our debate contributed to the better understanding of how young generation uh, can um, uh, subscribe to this business academia collaboration and can thrive and expand their achievements. Thank you for being with us. Bye.